The Squadron Shop, A Brief History Jerry Campbell started the Squadron Shop in 1968. It opened its doors to Detroit, Michigan as a traditional hobby shop under its current name, The Squadron Shop. Mr. Campbell was a history teacher as well as an accomplished model builder, so he had both a passion for and an understanding of the model building community. Squadron Shop was one of the first in the hobby industry to enter into the fledgling mail order business. Back then, the service phrase was, please allow six to eight weeks for delivery. Pages of advertising were purchased from magazines and columns listing items was how you would browse the offerings. You would then write down your order and send it in with a check, which arrived by mail to the Squadron Shop, who would then turn around, fill your order, and send it back to you via the U.S. Postal Service. In 1970, the Squadron Shop rolled out its first true catalog, volume number one in 1970, called The Squadron, with its iconic Eagle logo. It was actually much more than a catalog. Being an early pioneer in the mail order business, the first catalog was sort of a hybrid between a catalog and a magazine. It would later, in fact, become known as the Magalog. It contained not only items to purchase, but also articles on how to use newly created aftermarket parts and brief histories of an aircraft or a ship or a piece of armor. The catalog at that time was not free. It was subscription-based. It had a cover price of 60 cents with four issues a year coming out, but you could get a one-year subscription for $2. 1970 also brought many industry firsts with the introduction of the Squadron Shop's first proprietary products, usually having the name Squadron, Squadron Green Putty, Squadron Sheen, Squadron Magic Mask, and of course, Squadron Sheets Diary. By 1971, the Squadron Shop had opened two more hobby stores, another one in Detroit and one in Cleveland. Well-known artist Don Greer began working for the Squadron Shop as they launched Squadron Signal Publications. Their first book was Signal Aircraft No. 1, Luftwaffe in Action. Since then, Squadron Signal Books has sold over 13 million copies. The Squadron Shop has always been an innovator and strident supporter of the modeler and the modeling industry, and with this in mind, they reached out overseas. They were one of the first companies to introduce products into the United States that had never been seen here before, such as decals from Denmark, France, and England. They also began importing now iconic brands such as Hasegawa, Tamiya, Aoshima, LS, Italeri, Heller, Frog, and of course, Airfix. They created Squadron Armor Accessories, the precursor to today's True Details line. These items were displayed in their three hobby stores as well as in their magazine catalog. In 1971, you could buy a Revell 148 scale B25B Mitchell for $3.50 and they would ship it to you for an additional $0.60 cents using one of the three major credit cards available at the time, American Express, MasterCard International, and Bank AmeriCard, which today we call Visa. The Squadron Shop coined the phrase, fastest service in the world, Orders are packed and shipped the same day. Now today, with companies like Amazon, we take this for granted, but in the 1970s, that was a pretty new idea. From 1972 to 1978, Squadron Shop continued to grow its mail order business and opened another 12 hobby shops throughout the country, including Washington, D.C., Chicago, San Francisco, Long Island, Boston, and Philadelphia, amongst others. These stores were prominently featured in each of their early catalogs, and they were some of the best stock stores of the time. Major changes occurred in shipping when UPS began to ship to the lower 48 states in 1975, and then FedEx began expanding in 1977. This greatly reduced the time it took to get model kits into the hands of the modelers. Six to eight weeks became one to two weeks. The catalog industry was beginning to mature, And in the United States, it was considered a legitimate way to do business. This was when the Squadron Shop officially created the quarterly magazine catalog that they simply called the Magalog. It replaced the annual catalog and monthly supplements in 1976. This format would remain the same for 30 years until 2006. 
Between the stores, the growing mail order business, their proprietary lines, and their often unique products from overseas, other hobby shops asked if they could buy from Squadron as well. This was the beginning of Military Models Distributors, Inc., or MMD, which served the needs of the Squadron shop and of other hobby stores alike beginning in 1977. Now, this fundamentally changed the business. Now, MMD Squadron exploded onto the model scene in a new way. It also required a new facility to accommodate the rapid growth of both sales and product expansion. In 1978, the distribution center and headquarters was moved to Carrollton, Texas into a new 51,000 square foot building that they still occupy to this day. Although back in 1977, they only used about a third of that new facility, but of course they eventually grew into using the entire thing. In 1979, Mr. Chuck Horansky joined the company as vice president. Together, he and Mr. Campbell aggressively expanded the business by expanding the squadron product lines and greatly expanding the wholesale business. By 1985, with the mail order business at its peak and strong expansion into the distribution and import business, the decision was made to close all of the squadron shops around the country. This was a very sad day for many of the local modelers, myself included, who fondly remember those stores. By the 1990s, the internet was taking shape as the new way to do business, much like mail order had been two decades earlier. MMD Squadron quickly seized on this newfound technology and launched its website in 1993, followed by the site's current form launched in 1995. In 2003, after some 35 years of service, founder Jerry Campbell decided it was time to sell the business and the entire military model distributor squadron shop business was put up for sale. On November 18, 2005, the business was sold to Mike McMahon and the companies Squadron Shop Incorporated, Military Model Distributors Incorporated, and Squadron Signal Publications Incorporated became MMD Holdings LLC. McMahon immediately began to think of ways to refresh the company while maintaining its legacy of supporting the modelers. In 2006, the $5 subscription fee was dropped and the Squadron Flyer became free. In July of that year, the very first color catalog was delivered to customers, along with a toll-free number that was staffed around the clock every day, 24-7, 365. They also began producing new Squadron Signal books. Also in 2006, Squadron purchased Eagle Strike and Aeromaster decals, which expanded the Squadron products line into the world of aftermarket decals. In 2007, Squadron purchased VLS and Legacy Distributors, which expanded Squadron products into Warriors figures and aftermarket armor and diorama accessories. They also inherited an event called MasterCon, which invites skilled experts from around the world to help builders expand on their skill sets. Squadron later renamed the event Eagle Quest. In 2012, Squadron unveiled a new website. This was the first major rewrite of the site since 1995. It incorporates all the modern expectations of an e-commerce site, including social media links, and they now have a YouTube channel as well. So after 52 years in business, as of this recording, the Squadron still appears to be going strong. I still remember my first squadron shop experience, a 172nd scale Airfix bird dog in a bag kit, somewhere around 1974. I cherish that model, just as I cherished reading and rereading the squadron shop catalogs. So what's your squadron shop experience? I'm Max of Max's Models, and thanks for watching. Fought the German chaps in World War II In hurricanes and spitfires performed feats of daring do The finest British pilots that the world could hope to have Binky, Stinky, Squiffy, Frantisek and Stanislav Hold fire is that some foreign chaps risking their necks That's right, some of the bravest men were Polish and Czech
take that, Hitler. My name is Douglas Bader, let me tell of my ordeal. Lost both legs in an accident, these ones are not real. Not real. I left the Air Force after that, flying was a hobby. But when war broke in 39, came back. Just like Bobby. Shot down 22 of them, led the air attack. Till finally the Luftwaffe hit me back. Oh no, pretty baby. His plane on fire. Stuck in cold, it's such a shame to retire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never forget this great man's story and his role in Britain's glory. We flew in tough conditions, lucky to survive five missions. Not that I'm complaining, but I've had just ten hours training Epic dogfights in the sky, outnumbered, that's why We're now known by you as the few Few? He missed me! The Battle of Britain was our pilot's finest hour Although it seemed at first the Germans were the stronger power oh, so strong. We mustered all our courage in summer 1940 Scrambled Air Force squadrons to fly sortie after sortie Saw Nazi invasion of just as I'm sure Heard our bravery meant Hitler wouldn't be back for good No, no We beat the Fuhrer Without us frequent flyers your life would be poorer Yeah, yeah, yeah Britain secure Our story of heroics will forever endure Well, yeah So I think you'll find it's true. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few.